Chapter 4 is about the macromolecules of life. Yeah, it's got a lot of chemistry in it, and I know it's probably your favorite subject. But chemistry is actually really important for biology, because at the cellular level, it's all about chemistry. Now, Chapter 4, Section 1 is about polymers and how they're made from monomers. One way that we can start to appreciate chemistry is realizing that nutrition and chemistry are basically the same thing. So to understand how our bodies work, we need an understanding of chemistry. So for example, why are complex carbohydrates a long-term source of energy and simple carbs are not? Why are trans fats so much worse for you than a polyunsaturated fat? And why do we need complete sources of proteins? To fully understand that, we need to have some idea of how chemistry actually works. I'm gonna start with another connection to diet and our health. This is from Michael Pollan. He wrote In Defense of Food. Actually, it's one of my favorite books. And he says, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. That, more or less, is the short answer to the supposedly incredibly complicated and confusing question of what we humans should eat in order to be maximally healthy. There's a lot to say for that. So let's dive in and figure out why chemistry is so important and let's start learning these macromolecules along with what a vitamin is. Here are the learning objectives. We're gonna go over each of these as we go through each section. So you wanna read over these and become familiar with them because this is what we're going to be learning. There are many molecules in the human body. We don't really know exactly how many, but estimates put it around about 100,000 or so. But they usually fall into one of four classes of macromolecules. And to understand that, we're going to learn some chemistry, which I know is your favorite subject, and I know I keep saying that. But hopefully you'll gain an appreciation for it. The objective, one of the main ones, is to identify the four major groups of macromolecules used by a life. Carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and DNA. So the questions you should ask yourself as you study these macromolecules. What is the importance of each macromolecule? What are they used for? What do they do? And what is their chemical composition? And perhaps the best way to learn their chemical composition is you should be drawing their building blocks over and over again. You won't have to do it for a test, but I can tell you from experience, the best way to learn them is to draw them. Okay, we already know this. Many molecules in the human body, they include the nucleotides. This is actually two nucleotides held together. This is a triglyceride. Um, this is a type of fat. This is glucose molecule. This is what's sweet. It's a simple sugar inside of your soft drinks. And this would be a disaccharide. And this long molecule would be a complex carbohydrate. And you might notice that it's a repeating unit of many of those glucose molecules. Don't forget that we have these functional groups. Most of these functional groups, hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, amino, sulfhydryl, and phosphate are all hydrophilic. Add those to a molecule, they will make it more hydrophilic. The methyl group will change the shape of a molecule and make it more hydrophobic. And one other lesson that we learned from the last chapter is that organic molecules are based on one element, that is carbon. And the reason why is because carbon forms four stable covalent bonds. That's the methane right there, and you can also see ethanol as well. Chapter four, section one. This is on monomers are the building blocks of polymers. That sounds like a mouthful. But basically monomers are building blocks and polymers are large molecules made of building blocks. So the objective here is to explain the role of condensation and hydrolysis reactions in the utilization of macromolecules. Monomers and polymers. A monomer is a building block. A polymer is a large molecule made of many building blocks. So for example, carbohydrates are a polymer and the monomer would in this case would be glucose 
which is the building block. So when you think of complex carbohydrates, those are polymers made up of lots of glucose molecules. Nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides. There are four of them for DNA, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, which is something you need to start memorizing now, and proteins. Proteins are also a large polymer. Their monomer is an amino acid. So amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and there are basically 20 different amino acids used by basically every living thing on this planet. So how do we link these building blocks together? Well, it's called a dehydration reaction. And if you notice, I've got dehydration equals condensation. They're the same thing. Here's how they work. We have a monomer, which could be glucose, a nucleotide, or an amino acid. Basically, that would be a monomer. And through this condensation reaction, we're going to link them together to form a shorter polymer. The reason why it's a condensation reaction is because as you can see, water comes out of this reaction. Because water is coming out of it, well, it's a condensation reaction. It's also called a dehydration reaction because the polymer is losing water. Now, dehydration and condensation reactions, these are also anabolic reactions. That means they're building. Think about a guy on anabolic steroids. He's building lots of muscle. You're building lots of proteins. And these reactions require an input of energy. The other type of reaction is called a hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis. This means to split water. Hydro means water. Lysis means to split. So take our polymer. We split a water molecule apart and we put it back into the polymer. We break it down into the monomers and a shorter polymer. Hydrolysis reactions are also catabolic. Catabolic reactions break things down and they often release energy in the process. So as you can see, metabolism uses both condensation and hydrolysis reactions because metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions in your body. Building things up, which is an anabolic reaction, and catabolic, which is breaking things down. If you need energy for an anabolic reaction, a condensation reaction, you often get that energy from a catabolic reaction. Dehydration and condensation reactions are not limited to just a three macromolecules of carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. They are also used in their breakdown and buildup of a molecule called ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy currency of life, and we're going to learn a lot more about that molecule in the coming weeks. But basically, ATP is split to ADP through a hydrolysis reaction, and ATP is formed through a condensation reaction. Additionally, lipids are also making, made and broken down by condensation and dehydration reactions as well.